time out. We were always one. There was only one. There never was anyone else. But just to make the sport more scary, we played the game of solitary and hid ourselves in mysteries, swathed in our separate histories, and dreamed of finding one. But it was always one. One hung upon the cross. One sat beneath the Bodhi tree. And one was bad. And one was good. And one was all there'll ever be. Shaman and cynic. Sinner and saint. Behind the mask. Beneath the paint. Beyond the blade of arbitrary time. There has been one. Integral and sublime, being whatever, however, whoever it chose to be. Being you, being me, being itself in myriad manifestation. And not to spoil the game, but just to have a moment's celebration, let's recollect with love and jubilation that we are one. Woohoo! <laughs> Aha. Getting old is a whole new territory for me. A strange landscape, a different perspective. As the fetters loosen, layers of ignorance fall away to reveal a core of love, bliss, and gratitude. Despite the burden of the body, I have never been so free. The golden years were never about the flesh. Mm. Now, my last book is called This Is How It Is. It was going to be called um, Roach Holes, <laughs> Ink Stains and Roach Holes. But somebody decided that that wasn't a good title, and it wasn't me because I thought it was a good title. But this is the title poem that would have been the title poem. It's called What You See. I'm an old hippie poet. You can tell me at a glance by the ink stains on my fingers and the roach holes in my pants. <laughs> called Song Without Music, and anybody who wants to set it to music can have it, because I don't do music, but anyway, Song Without Music. This body's not as cozy as it used to be, so I'm living on love and THC, and hugs are my very best remedy. The world's not such a bad place to be when there's plenty of love and THC. And they're the things sustaining me. Sooner or later, there's pain. That's understood. Some very close friends and some very good weed, and life's still good. Given there's love surrounding me, I'm grateful I'm here where I want to be with my friends and my THC. <laughs> <laughs> And the title poem from, the, the, finally the right title poem from This Is How It Is. Just because it is what it is, and things are as they are, and what will be will be, and our karma is our karma, doesn't mean we stop trying. Doesn't mean we no longer strive to alleviate suffering doesn't mean we become detached, callous, indifferent. It means we work diligently to bring forward and share the love that can change the way things are. Mm. Mother Speaks. I have cautioned you with fires and floods, heat waves and drought. 
I have warned you with earthquakes and tsunamis, mudslides and sinkholes. I have threatened you with hurricanes and typhoons, cyclones and blizzards. Don't make me come down there and do extinction. <laughs> Plan of action. Pray without ceasing, ceasing, says the scripture. Pray by all means, but prayer is not enough. Get up off your zafu. Let love drive you out into the street. Roll up your sleeves and work for peace, for freedom and justice and compassion for all beings. Protest and demonstrate and sign petitions, write to newspapers, speak out against willful ignorance, rebel against greed, join hands, open hearts. Let's get this show on the road. <laughs> An old one I haven't read for a while. Just call it love. I woke up this morning with nothing to say, no reason to kick off the covers, until I decided this must be the day for writing a poem just for lovers. For lovers of every dimension and shape, of all inclinations and sizes, whatever our languages, ages, or shades, whatever our maps, masks and disguises. For those who are awkward and shy about love and those who are brazen and bold. For those who came loving into the world or found love when they had grown old. For those to whom love is a finite reserve laid by for relations and friends. And those who go squandering boundless amounts from accounts whose supply never ends. For those who are, to whom love is a burden at times, and those who can carry it lightly. For those who are awkward and shy and bores about love, and those who are witty and sprightly. For those to whom love is a place in the soul where the gifts of the cosmos converge, and those to whom love is a thing of the flesh, a mere biological urge. For those who are frozen and icy in love, and others who tremble and burn. For those to whom love came as simply as breath, and those who have struggled to learn. For those who must keep love within an easy reach, and those who can love across oceans. For those who have ironclad rules about love. And those who have whimsical notions. For those to whom love is a holiday treat. A nice place to spend a vacation. And those to whom love is a full-time career. A 24-hour occupation. For those who are miserly hoarders of love. And those who can never say no who fling it through windows and bounce it off walls and give it wherever they go. For those who are fully acquainted with love and dine every night at its table. For those who are ignorant failures at love and fear they will never be able. For all of us lovers and all of us are, whatever our virtues, foibles or strengths, Let's love to the limit, and even beyond. Let's go to inordinate lengths. Let's love, and let love be our glue and our guide. Let love be our choice and selection. If we let love connect us, then love will direct us, and love us along to perfection. Out of my hands, I was pleased that Crystal is Crystal here. Yeah. 
no, not. Anyway, uh, they just written a book about therapeutic touch, and they included this poem, and I'm delighted. It's called Out of My Hands. How amusing, how quaint, how droll to have to be always in control. The planet spins, the oceans roll. Look who thinks she's in control. <laughs> By request, because I haven't done this for a long time, um, probably a lot of you are familiar with it, it's called foul fornication. <laughs> Last night on television, the renowned British psychiatrist R.D. Lang expressed his opinion that nobody should be put in prison because they fucked a duck. My thoughts went immediately to the duck. Mature? Consenting? Male or female? And was there protection from pregnancy and STDs? Anal or vaginal penetration? Enough foreplay to guarantee lubrication? Was the duck provocatively dressed? Sexually aggressive? Did it say no but mean maybe? Was it a platonic acquaintance, a blind date, or a complete stranger? And was it driven home, or just dumped on a deserted road to waddle be dragged back to the dorm? Will this incident leave it permanently scarred or roll like water off its back? Where are the animal rights activists? Are we to have no statement, policy statement from the SPCA? Has the Humane Society abandoned its principles? Let the trinks busy themselves with the duck puckers. Be they neurotic, psychotic, maladjusted, antisocial, sociopathic, or merely presbyopic. My concern is for the mallards, the pintails, the scoters, the mergansers, the violated daisies, daffies, and donalds whose ruffled feathers elicit no outcry from the flock of complacent quacks. <laughs> and having become known somewhat for the duck poem, and that's all, <laughs> I had to write this. I found I found the title in the dictionary actually, and I thought it was so perfect. They had a it's called Facilis Descensus Averno, which means easy as the slide into hell. <laughs> At my zenith of talent and nadir of luck, I'm known for a poem about fucking a duck. Despite my great skill and originality, depth of expression and spirituality, all of my subtleness strikes like a truck, and I'm known for a poem about fucking a duck. In a moment of madness, a brief little lapse, an error most surely, a brainstorm perhaps, I blotted and tarnished my good reputation, sullied my skill for a moment's sensation, and now I'm disgracefully, shamefully stuck being known for that poem about fucking a duck. <laughs> How could I forfeit my lofty ambition? I've slipped in this shit on the road to perdition. Abandoned Parnassus to wallow in muck and be known for that poem about fucking a duck. <laughs> Linda. 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 Oh, Linda. Linda. What? Five more minutes. Five more minutes? Okay. A word from the wise. Nobody flirts with all ladies. The very idea is visible. All ladies aren't hot. And like it or not, we're as close as it gets to invisible. Have a heart and be kind to all ladies. Let us know you don't find us so frightful. A smile would be nice. 
but a nod would suffice, and a wink would be simply delightful. <laughs> Take the time to acknowledge, old ladies. We're not as thick-skinned as we seem. You don't have to woo us, but don't look right through us. It devastates our self-esteem. Spare a word now and then for old ladies, just a howdy perhaps, or good day. We don't need to converse, but nothing is worse than dismissively turning away. Lend an ear, if you will, to old ladies. We've wonderful stories to tell. And to your surprise, you may find us wise and deliciously witty as well. But if you're afraid of old ladies, it may be you're rightly alarmed for once in a while, we bewitch and beguile, and you might just find yourself charmed. <laughs> Not my department. I seem to be developing an ever-increasing antipathy toward technology. Please don't try to explain to me how to do something on the computer or the iPad. Don't suggest a smartphone. Don't talk to me about clouds and apps. Spare me the comparisons of tweets and Twitters. There is an empty neighborhood in my brain which Silicon Valley has not yet populated with slick areas to which electronic concepts cannot stick. Bring back cursive script and the world will be familiar again. And last poem, Sin in my 70th year. I am almost pretty close to 88, and it's still true, for me, anyway. I own up in varying degrees to the seven deadly sins, and countless others more trivial. But now, in my threescore and tenth year, I confess, above all, to pride. I am not too proud for hand-me-downs and handouts, and even on occasion, helpful advice. I'm not proud of my looks, that was long ago, nor of my accomplishments, save that I have survived. I have no pride of possessions, all are impermanent and mutable, nor of my intellect, which, like my body, is swiftly succumbing to the indignities of the age. I might take pride in the kind hearts of my children, but fearing the jealousy of the gods, I shall keep silent. But I am proud, fiercely and joyously proud, simply of being here, of existing at this time and place in the continuum of consciousness as witness and participant. I am proud that I have been summoned by the universe to learn its workings, to serve the great work as lover and beloved. I am proud to be a drop in the bucket of totality, a spark in the blazing glory of creation. I am proud beyond measure, like a freshman at the senior prom, of having been invited to the dance. Thank you.